Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Justin. I'm Gabe. And I'm Nolan. Welcome Hi. back, Nolan. Hello. It's been a long time, and this I has missed been, you all. This is episode 118 of Dang Podcast. How we doing? I'm so exhausted. And we, we, we've done a couple of reactions here, though, here and there, but it's kind of late at night, so I'm also starting to get a little tired. But uh, otherwise, I'm okay. Nolan, how are you feeling? I have returned from beyond the grave. <laughs> it's been so long. Like, what was the last, at least jeez. last podcast even? Um, jeez. I mean, really, the last thing I remember was doing like a live stream. It was like one of the first times that Trey oh, yeah. even sat in. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, you were there for the live stream. It was the very last live stream we actually did. Yeah. Yeah, after that, it was just like, it, everything went wrong with that podcast as far as like audio quality. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I was just like, let's not do live streams for a while. <laughs> Because of like how my schedule and like my work stuff has been going and how his schedule has been going, it just hasn't exactly meshed up. So I've been working on my two comics, My Armor Maiden and Giga Trigger Zero, uh, and kind of just doing my own thing. But hopefully I can kind of scoot in here every now and again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to work my schedule around so we film like on weekdays, at the very least, at, this very, at least on Fridays, just so we can get you in there. It actually does kind of depend on, like, David's schedule as well, because he's becoming, like, more busy. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, I haven't even, jeez, I haven't seen him right? even, even longer. Right. Like, I see, like... I still need house. to give him his <laughs> weird book. Oh, I don't worry. I took care of it. Don't worry oh, about it. Okay. Have we discussed that yet? Are we going to? Uh, no. Okay, I'm going to discuss it with him. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna rip, rip him really hard. All right, uh, we're gonna <laughs> we're actually gonna talk about uh, reactions again, kind of like hopefully like the third entry in this like little mini trilogy of us discussing like reactions, like how we're gonna go about them in the future. But, uh, I do want to like bring attention to the fact that uh, Trey actually uh, left the house. He he finally moved out. So best wishes to him. No, as an intern, this was a natural course of action. He, he's been promoted to his own guy. <laughs> to his own guy. Yes. Yeah, he's his own boss now. His own boss. So best wishes to Trey on that part. Uh, now we're going to jump into uh, the discussion about the reactions, specifically like the comments from our last podcast from a week ago. We had to really check those recently. No, that's okay. I have only like, they still they the wrote same. you a novel. Yeah. So it's it's definitely far less than like what we had last time. Mm-hmm. Just people just want to add in their Jesus uh, give the uh, Cliff Notes version of that, Chief. All right, once like read it real closely. So if I can recall, like uh, in the last two podcasts, we were talking about this. People were talking about like how how much they like loved the reactions, what they liked about it, and one of those things was definitely being able to watch it with us, and also just bring up their spirits. Uh, I forget other things that they mentioned, but I think a few of them like suggested how we would go about doing reactions from here on in because uh, I don't know if it like it's clear to everyone, but you know the way we did reactions, like this whole reaction format that we we pretty much borrowed from like the bigger like reaction channels at the time, is actually kind of bad in the fact that we show the content, and so what I've been trying to do. I think we, we've we been doing is uh, doing a little thing with Patreon where you would just simply donate like a dollar, like a dollar, and you'd be able to have access to pretty much every single uh, re- full reaction that would be coupled with a discussion video that would only be on YouTube. And so that was like, that was like an, um, an incentive for people to go onto our Patreon page was to donate that one dollar and get that full reaction video that they wanted. Of course, we had to still not show the content because Patreon also has its own terms of use, and we do not want to get in trouble with them either. Um, maybe it's just the fact that I haven't made it clear to people that they can see it on Patreon. I mean, I just didn't advertise it as much as I should have. So maybe, like, um, at some point I will uh, make a little short video where I tell people, like, hey, uh, right before you watch this discussion video... Here, you can actually watch the full reaction video on Patreon, and you'll be able to view it from there with just like a single dollar per month, and then start the discussion video on YouTube. Whew, okay. 
So, Gabe, did you get a good gist of everyone? What everyone's been saying here? It's Holy actually fuck. it's pretty much just kind of three, mm-hmm. followed by what happened to the Minecraft series. Yeah, we'll get to that eventually. All right. So, where do you want to start, Gabe? Will Will I ever get the chance to be Prisoner Alex ever again? <laughs> it's possible. It's very much so possible. All right. So, let's see. Two days ago. Extra audio filler. What? <laughs> okay. Huh? All right. So, first one I'll probably mention is from Zoner. This one was a really big one. Whew. All right. So, uh, they bring up the idea for the split tab, like the timestamp thing that we had. Yeah. And. One thing that they suggested that we could do with that is kind of what you already do is where you kind of give a heads up on when we actually hit the start button. Yeah. And that's all like available on Patreon. That's what we've been doing so far. So maybe you didn't hear about it and now you're hearing about it now. Or this maybe is the first time to... I'm even hearing about it. Well, yeah. <laughs> like I didn't make any announcement video about it. I just kind of like tagged on, uh, like low card in the YouTube uh, system where it would show up like saying like, oh, uh, something on Patreon, although I haven't really been on top of that lately. So maybe that's why. So maybe I just have to keep doing that over and over again. Maybe we'll get people's attention. Mm. Uh, They go on to say that it's cool and projecting the timestamp will help keep viewers on the same frame as us as the one that we're watching. Mm. However, it could get tedious for the most part on the terms of the viewer having to go through all that. So he suggested that we do that for videos that the creator did not give us permission for. And I think I, for the most part, said that last week. Mm -hmm. Uh, I said, we can show whatever the creator says that we can with their permission and following whatever guidelines they might have given us. Mm -hmm. But um, that really does work. And uh, they said live streams will work for heavily requested videos. Otherwise, it might start to get annoying to... Do it all the time. Um, well, I mean, we could like have like one special like reaction video, or maybe just like like a few that will like accept like like in the live stream in the comments. Mm-hmm. And it really shouldn't be too much of a problem, like as far as uh, syncing it with everyone else, because what they're going to be see- perceiving it will be live for them. And so when we do like the three, two, one, go, that's when they line it up and should do just fine. It's just. A matter of like when they'll receive that, like that command. Yeah. So I think it shouldn't be too big of a problem. I guess the big issue would be a timestamp, though. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, we should be okay. And you brought up the idea of actually having like a time, like an actual live timer, instead of focusing on some sort of third-party software or something like that to try and help display when we could actually just have our own timer and hit start on it whenever. Oh yeah, that's right. I did I got. A- Invest in that. Um, and one thing that I mentioned was pretty much finding out what the time gap would be for best case scenario for a viewer. Right. That way we can tell them start and we actually wait a second or two to actually hit start. That way as we're getting their comments, it's live. Gotcha. That's what you mean. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that should work. Right. Um. They also talked about the blue screen, how it's a good idea and whatnot. I think it will work great for discussions and thought videos, but I'm not too sure the viewers will like it for reactions since they want to see the full video reacted to. Mm, I guess, to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. But some videos you can definitely just have that on display and it should be okay. Uh, I shared that that video with you guys about Kind of Funny and their uh, little cool setup where... They have like a desk right here and seats right here. And in the background, it's just a big, giant wall sized uh, display where they can show like whatever content or whatever media. So it could be like a slideshow of like different images or a that full video. That would be really video. cool. Yeah, I'm really down for something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The only problem is that uh, we have to make sure this wall is clean. We have to keep the, like, we have to push this couch like forward and we need to like light up that wall pretty well. Just to make sure it works. We could totally do that. Totes do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, then we have Heaven S, who 
with the agreement of underworld ruler. I'm guessing it says Kanye West. I <laughs> cannot read the full name because we're on the mobile version. Okay. But it uh, says, I don't know if this is a good idea, but what if you make a separate YouTube channel just for reactions? That way, if you do get a copyright strike, it'll be for that channel, and you can continue doing your regular content for this one. It's... I'm pretty sure we've addressed this a few times in the past about like why we don't want to mainly for the effort that actually goes through for running two separate channels. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, like, just, like, based on, like, the way you word it is, like, oh, it's kind of, like, it's kind of, like, an extra channel to help with views and stuff like that, and it's disposable. And the thing is, like, if I make that kind of content, I don't want to just end up killing it off. I mean, we killed off, like, reacting, but that's a series. The channel still stays. So if we have like a full channel, an entirely different channel that ends up getting like kicked off, that's just, that's terrible. Like what happens to the subscribers who just find that out? It is the a hard waste. Way. It becomes a waste. So I, I'd rather a not. Huge mistake. And plus like Dank Productions is a production channel. So it focuses on different things. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't really make too much sense to have like a separate channel like on YouTube for that. Yeah. That's what I think. I agree. Uh, anything else? Oh, uh, one thing I didn't really like about that whole idea was, um, it does feel a bit dirty to just, like, oh, we'll do what we want regardless, and if YouTube says anything, it doesn't matter because that's something that we planned on having as a throwaway. That's one thing that I feel, like, in a more moral and ethic kind of way, more selfish kind of way of thinking of it is... That's people subscribing to that channel, not our channel, taking right. views from our own videos that go to our own videos, <laughs> as awkward as that sounds. Yeah. And then, last but not least, the, I, I saved this one for last because it's one that I recognize the most, and Pyro. that's Pyro. Pyro. Back at it again with the long comments. <laughs> All right. So, the only reason I could see requesting the audience for the creator's permission is it creates a spam request. That does make a lot of sense. That they're just going to be flooded with people requesting that, oh, we're able to do this, or oh, we're able to do that. And, yeah, I really do see where that comes from. I can see how that is a bad idea. But, you say that um, you understand why we rely on the audience, but you're not sure if we're the first ones that we should depend on and that for the most part kind of strikes me as a bit odd that you say that it's a good that we do rely on the on the fans you know the subscribers the viewers the watchers and all that but it shouldn't be the first people that we depend on in the sense that youtube is the way that it is you kind of are our first line of anything yeah our whole business and idea of making money revolves entirely around you guys and your support and what you guys do with your free time. Yeah. And also I feel that like if we do get permission, we should we should be the ones approaching the content creator about it. We so always just be making sure that anything that we use is like, you know, also just, you know, protected under fair use and that mm -hmm. we're doing something to it that's, you know, at least somewhat transformative. In in a way. You know? I know that like a uh, I was actually looking through like my Gmail, I was just looking looking for like that one permission I got from Rocket Rock. I found it, and so like I don't know. It just feels better if I were to approach a YouTuber about using their content in a reaction video. And so there, um, we do need to address like how we're gonna get uh, requests for videos to react to, because at the moment we aren't doing anything about that. And we're definitely not actually getting requests. Well, very few requests for videos. I can kind of understand why people are a bit skeptical on it and whatnot for, I guess, reactions per se, since they won't be able to get to see it. However, they do get the discussions, the commentary, and all that that yeah. we would hope that we were known for when it came to reactions and all that. Yeah. And it's not to say that, like, like, like with like the reactions without the content aren't successful because like if it's like if you're known for doing that kind of stuff then like the views will fall through mm. the problem is is that like with our channel like how it's been raised well the reaction specifically we would react to everything under the sun 
And so he had like fans from all over the place who have like their own very unique ways of like enjoying content, mainly from like the big main, the big time reactors who had this reaction format where they show the content in its entirety mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And so if we just kind of present them with something that isn't at all, like for example, discussion dang it didn't really fly with a lot of people. That kind of happens. It happens, but you just got to keep hitting it. Yeah, just keep yeah. working and keep trying and keep doing new things. We yeah, keep what we stick. do, and yeah. people will eventually follow. And that's what seems to be what we're getting at to like our middle ground. Although we do need to figure out uh, how we should get people to request more videos because initially that would also be a Patreon thing. So either we just kind of keep waiting for people to join Patreon and give us the suggestions for videos or. We just kind of keep that as a public thing. I would say that it does kind of fall into both. However, if there are people in our Patreon and whatnot, theirs will definitely take top priority over everything. Oh, okay. So, like, what we used to have, we had watch priority videos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Where, with just standard YouTube comments, we kind of watch what we want to out of that list. But if it's something from Patreon, we kind of throw that at the top of the list. Okay. As well as, like, like mentions of the people who requested it and stuff yeah. like that. Um, actually, Paro went on to add uh, something actually really useful. Um, just like to add something to my comment. In addition to Rooster Teeth and Blizzard not minding reactions to their content, I do believe that creators who make an- who make anime cracks slash vines also don't mind reactions, albeit permission is asked for in advance. If you're interested in that, I can list off a few creators who you might be able to contact for their permission for their content. That actually might come in handy. Yeah, that's actually really big. Um, I think that might have been the point I should have tried to make instead of the one that I made last time, which you kind of said would be a bad idea, which is to have the fans contact the content creators. Um, If you know of anyone who's somewhat okay with it or where you know or have an idea that they think that you think that they're a bit more open to letting people use their content as long as they ask first Mm -hmm. if you give us the names and all that and tell us like exactly which videos you might want to watch we could probably narrow it down to that yeah okay it's a bit of work but it's definitely a much it's like it's a fair playing field i guess Mm -hmm. for lack of better words it's it's just a bit more fair and that's I think that's kind of what we want now because, like, the reactions have, and they, I guess they still kind of have, like, a bad, um, reputation after, like, what's been going on in the past with, like, whole gray under, it's not even just gray day under a, but just, like, a whole bunch of other big time YouTubers who have just been, like, exposing these reactions. Bullying. Channels. You can say that too. But, I mean, they're just saying, like, because, like, um, they feel like, their their stuff's been stolen. I was, I was thinking about the uh, yeah shipping name stolen. I googled about that too. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if anything, like we should still have freedom of speech, which is kind of questionable right now on on YouTube. But that should be like number one a okay on YouTube. It's just like us to be, to feel free to discuss about like these different things, whether it be videos or just news in general. And that's kind of what the idea of discussion hanging was all about. It was totally safe, but it was also us talking about things that matter to us or we we care for. I think that's everything. I think that's everything. We could talk about, um, since we do have some time, could talk about what's been going on with YouTube nowadays. How uh, It started with Philip DeFranco pointing out how there's been, like, copyright Like, oh, well, not, I wouldn't say copyright, but just like restrictions on videos to be monetized based on language. So, wait, that's an actual thing? I remember seeing that on my Instagram. I'm not sure that it's like as critical as a lot of people are making it out to be. That's what I'm thinking too. Um, I think that, um, it's probably just something that YouTube is using to to protect its, its investment. And honestly, um, from a creator's perspective, like they control the media format. And so as a creator, the way that people should be thinking is like either 
they rebel against you know the system and try to like have a non-censored medium either that or they can you know try to sink or swim and try to come up with you know content that maybe be a, a little less shocking i guess so um but I mean, you know me, like personally, I, I hate censorship. Like mm-hmm. I think that censoring creators is like, nonsense. It's garbage. But, you know, truthfully, if it is as big a deal as people are making it out to be, absolutely. Like people need to just hit it hard and make, make, make you, YouTube, make it very clear that this sucks. They suck. And they're going to, basically, it's this, their decision is going to hurt their investment more than the, uh, than what the creators do. And what, from what I've seen, like, the, the only videos that are being, like, demonetized are ones that have, like, really clickbaity, like, sh- really shocking stuff in the tags, like, like uh-huh. murder and rape and, Stuff like that because advertisers don't want their products to be associated oh, with these really like graphic horrible things. Mm. Um, so I don't honestly think that it's as big as people are making it out to be. If it is, absolutely, let's tank it like the Titanic. If you know, <laughs> but honestly, Christ. I don't believe that it is. I think that it's just something that YouTube is using to protect it. It's, it's investment, and people are having a shit about it, and nobody's going to care a month from now. Viewer, viewers use iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> Titanic sank. <laughs> well, man, uh, what was I gonna say? I'm actually really curious about the extent that YouTube is going into it because if it's even half as big as people make it out to be, every top YouTuber is out. Yeah, because they, especially number Felix at number one, PewDiePie. Right. He's he's off. If that happens. Yeah, because like... Not only does he swear in English, but he does a lot of swearing in Swedish. in Swedish. Especially when he plays horror games, which is a really big staple for him. Right. So it would it would cause him to pretty much leave YouTube. Because like yeah. he would not be able to monetize his videos that way. Yeah. I, d- I just don't think that it, it's going to be that way. It mm. shouldn't. And like there's good reasons why it shouldn't. I think it that... It shouldn't and it probably won't, but... I mean, YouTube's freaking copyrighted someone's material that they created because big corporation used their material. This is true. Yeah. Did I ever tell you about that? Just yeah, you told me yeah. about that in the last uh, it was, well, a while ago. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Family Guy aired an episode where they kind of poked fun at game breaking glitches in old ColecoVision games. Mm-hmm. Um, like the tech, like Tech Mobile, and God, I can't remember the basketball game, but um, yeah. So they decide to use actual gameplay footage of people just being complete bastards with the with the error in the coding, mm-hmm. and they took someone's video from I think it was like nine and eleven years ago, mm-hmm. and because. Fox used their footage and whatnot. Um, YouTube's algorithms went, checked, found their videos, and since it is the exact video taken from that creator, well, the uploader and whatnot, it gave them copyright strikes. That is hel- that's hilarious and absurd. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. So it's like if you were to make a painting 10 years ago and someone decided to take your painting, repaint it in the same exact way, but they painted it on their own canvas, Mm -hmm. and then suing you for using their imagery. It'd be be more like if you made the painting and, like... They just put it in it. And they found it, and they made a print of it, and then used it as the cover for a magazine. And then said, you know... This is ours. We found it. You have no way of proving that it's yours. So, well, it's not even that because they can prove that it's there because it was on their channel uh, and yeah. it showed the timestamp and all that. It would be kind of like what you said. It, would, but um, they made a slight alteration to it. They changed 
how right. it said computer right. and it changed it to player two. Right. Because it was uh, Peter playing uh, Cleveland. Yeah. So it's kind of like, like you said, you making a picture, but them taking it and putting it in a different frame. Yeah. True. Yeah. And exactly. saying, this is ours and you decided to use it. So anything that you possibly could have gotten out of it, it's ours now. At the same time, though, incidents like that, you know incidents are like that are going to be like total outliers mm-hmm. to the equation. So like, you know, no system is a perfect system. Um, but That's because, true, but it took, because it took forever for YouTube to get back to them. They stated their claim. They showed the evidence. People, that, the videos had hundreds of thousands of views from all them years ago. And it took YouTube a long time to rectify it. At the same, at the same time, like I said, that's an outlier. That's something that's going to happen less than one percent of the time. Yeah. Um. So looking at the big picture, like no system is a perfect system. But the thing is about YouTube is that YouTube has the benefit of being a very social sh- system with a very loud voice and a very like um, creative community. Which has very creative ways of uh, making its voice known, and um, so there's going to be people that are going to approach this very stupidly. There's going to be people that are going to approach this in an intelligent way and approach it rationally. And hopefully, the rational voices win out, and you know we'll get a little bit closer to having a perfect system. Either way, I don't think this thing that YouTube is doing with demonetizing videos. Um, is going to uh, hurt YouTubers as much as as people think they do, as mm-hmm. people think they will. Like, um, like I I I'll bet you anything that uh, um, Ninja Sex Party's sixty nine sixty nine video is gonna drop next week, and it's going to do famously. <laughs> like, I mean. I just hope it's not... The proof's going to be in the pudding, I think. I hope it's not another, like, Fine Brothers fiasco where people see something and like, oh, it's just terrible, terribleness. And the underlying thing is it was way worse than we thought. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I kind of want to just, like, make this clear. I know that this is, like, way into the podcast, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people either, like, are paying attention or know this or have already tuned out. But Fine Brothers had nothing to do with what, why we stopped reaction in the first place. It really wasn't that. Yeah, it wasn't that at all. Yeah, sure, they were like, like out there just like putting like copyright claims on people who used their content. We mm. never, I don't think we even used any kind of content from them as nah. a reaction at all. So. And you know, what's really funny though is what was happening with the Fine Bros when that was going on. One of the funniest things uh, you remember how I said that. There are going to be people that are going to approach the situation rationally, and then there's going to be people that are going to be doing stupid things. Mm-hmm. There are people that were gaining views and gaining subscribers and making money because they had live feeds on YouTube of the Fine Brothers losing subscribers. Yeah, that's so funny. And that is like the irrational people who it's like really hilarious to see them operate, but like, it's, good lord. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. But it's great that way. Yeah, I, say. I mean, sharks eating sharks eating sharks. Jesus Christ. Uh, what else is there to talk about? But yeah, I really don't think that like it would never go to that extreme where they monetize, they demonetize all these big time YouTuber videos. It would be an outrage because it would people it would, would riot. One thing that I'm worried about is if how I said if it turns into another Fine Brothers thing where it's bad but it's way worse than people thought um i'm really worried of like small time youtubers what if that's what i'm worried about too what if youtube really is as strict as they say they are going to be with it but to all their big names they turn a blind eye but for everyone who's under a hundred under a thousand under ten thousand subscribers where they don't really have the big community backing them, I wonder if they're going to put down that iron fist of Johnny Law. I don't think that that would happen. I don't think so I think either. that those I think that those channels are so negligible that YouTube pretty much doesn't even acknowledge their existence in the first place. Yikes! Unless they're flagged. Unless they're flagged. 
Yeah. Um, and my thing with that is that, like, they couldn't, they really wouldn't be doing that because to do something like that, to, like, like, be so strict as to, like, demonetize people's videos, it would deter a good number of people from YouTube. Yes. As content creators, because, like, content, like, the whole idea of, like, making videos for a living is one of those things that keep people to come, come back, coming back to YouTube in the first place. Look, companies are usually only going to make positive changes if it means, you know, protecting their investment. That's and true. if this is a negative change and it begins hurting their investment, it will not last very long. I guarantee right. you that. From the whole Google Plus thing? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's still happening. How is Google Plus a thing? It's so Google's rich. Google, yeah. dude, Google Plus is the bing of social network. Nobody gives a fuck. It used to like, be, it used to be a thing in the beginning. Like, oh, like, ooh, it's like one of those like clubs that you can't really be in, but you totally could. But it's so weird. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of like Google Plus thought it could, thought it could, it could uh, Facebook, Facebook, yeah, and turn Facebook into MySpace. Little did they know they'd be lower than MySpace. More little, people, little did they know Google Plus became its own category, which is Google Plus. I mean, people use Google Plus be- because they had to, but they have to. But like, if they didn't, like, it would legitimately be the bing of social network. They like, I feel like more people have used Ask dot com in the last year than have used Bing. And and more if if Google Plus was like an optional thing, then more people. I think it's more people would use like MySpace. Because MySpace is here's, here's the thing. I think Bing only exists still because it's backed by Microsoft. Otherwise, it would go the same way as Ask Schwab. <laughs> Ask Schwab. Oh my gosh. Or Ask Jeeves. That was it. Where'd you get Schwab from? Because they had, they had both those names. Really? Yeah. That's incredible. But yeah, I could totally see MySpace like. <laughs> like being that next thing, like if like uh, Google Plus was just an option, because MySpace is music. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know, dude. Like, it's ridiculous. Either way, you know, MySpace teaching middle schoolers of the early two thousands HTML coding. Also teaching you about priorities in your friends list. Yeah, Great. top I eight. Mean, <laughs> despite all odds. The human spirit will prevail, create and creators will sink or swim. And the 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 creators that are worth watching will will swim. Right. Like and you know if if some people don't make it because of a company trying to protect their investment, then they simply were not creative enough and they couldn't uh you know, weather the storm. Hmm. I can only hope that, like, we could still stay afloat. I don't think we have anything to worry about. Yeah. I think... I don't know, like, right now we're just, like, kind of doing a tug of war with the viewers, seeing, like, what we can do to, like, bring that middle ground reactions. Yes. Yeah. So, you, YouTube politics is kind of past our battlefield. We're too busy shooting ourselves in the foot saying, is, uh, why are we losing so much blood? <laughs> yeah. It's our own battle right now. Look, we'll find something that works and it'll stick. We just got to keep working at it. Right. All right. That's pretty much a good stopping point for this uh, podcast. Nolan, it's been good to see you and hopefully we can have more videos with you in it. Hopefully. I mean, hopefully. we'll see. Hopefully. I'll try not to disappear for another like two months. Wow. Has it really been? I doubt. I don't think so. I Borderline? I'm kind of believing that. <laughs> we'll have to see. We'll have to reference back to like older podcasts. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So, like, hopefully this has been informative enough to tell you that, like, um, reactions still gets to remain on Patreon. Otherwise, discussions will remain here. And we'll always encourage you to join Patreon. Otherwise, discussions sh- should suffice as far as, like, a really nice, engaging conversation about whatever we watch or whatever we want to talk about. But uh, Hey, when are we having Jeff Goldblum on the podcast? I don't know. I I talked to him and he was like, I'm not so sure. And I'm like, okay. Okay, Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> so I'm sure, I'm pretty sure if we have dang it discussions featuring Jeff Goldblum, the conversation hit, will be riveting. Hit, hit like those six digits. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. 
All right. So, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Dang Podcast. My name is Justin. I'm Gabe. I'm legendary blue-haired homosexual Nolan. And thanks for watching. Hashtag bye. Come on, Jeff Goldblum.